Yes, on Wednesday there will be no homework except this stuff. Yeah, I don't give you guys homework the day before the test, and I won't give you guys homework the day of the test either. Okay, so the only thing will be to just you know study and stuff. Okay, so let's get into what we're doing here today. Again, solving absolute value inequality. So I want to remind you. Okay, so remember the absolute value of x. It means the distance. of x from 0. Okay, and again, on a number line. <coughs> okay, that is the true meaning of absolute value. Distance from 0 on a number line. <coughs> and if you remember from yesterday again, This simple equation that we did yesterday, right? And again, this is saying the distance of x from 0 is 3. Okay, right? That's what this equation is saying. Absolute value symbols mean distance. The thing inside is what thing, what thing is, you know, we're finding the distance, okay? So we're finding the distance of x. And from zero, and that is three. Okay, equals means is, right? Is three. So that's this is the words of what this math symbols or these math symbols are saying. Okay, and so what's an example of a number that is three units away from zero? What is a number that's three units from zero? Three. Okay, three. Is there any other number that is three units away from zero? Negative three. And negative three, right? On a number line. Okay. <coughs> That's an equation, right? Equation because it uses an equal sign. It relates two things with an equal sign. That's an equation. We're saying two things are equal. Okay. Well, let's change it up just a little bit here, and let's now make it an inequality. Okay. <clears throat> what inequality symbol is this, by the way? It's greater than. Luke says greater than or equal to. We all agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It is greater than or equal to. All right, it is. Remember, if you ever had any trouble, okay, if you make a capital L, your left hand, by the way, makes a capital L, right? Your right hand makes a backwards L. Capital L for your left hand, right? That's how you had to remember it back when you were in elementary school or whatever. Or maybe if you didn't ever learn what your left or right are, your left hand makes a capital L, okay? And if you just turn it a little bit, whoop, that's a less than symbol. L for less than, okay? And then this will be your greater than symbol, okay? So I want to keep those straight too. Okay, so what we want to do here now, again, we're talking about distance from zero, okay? But now we want the distance of x from zero is greater than or equal to three, okay? So our distance won't be exactly three from zero, the distance will be greater than or exactly three. So let's draw a number line here to, to kind of see that. Okay, so I'll put zero there in the middle, uh, like one, two, three, So we already know that exactly three away, exactly three away would put us right here at three. Okay. But we want it to be greater than three away. Which direction should I go on my number line if I want to go more than three away? I'm already three away right here, right? I'm three away from zero at three. If I want to be more than three away, which way should I go from here? To the right or to the left? To the right. So we want to go to the right. Okay, we're going to go to the right. Okay, is three also a, a solution here? 
Yes, because 3 is greater than or equal to 3, right? So we have the equal to. So we're going to put a big old circle there on the 3 as well. Okay. What inequality describes this part of the number line? What inequality describes this part of the number line? We start at 3, and we want to be more than or equal to 3. So Tyler? <coughs> Yeah, so, so this part of the number line here is x greater than or equal to 3. Okay? So some of our solutions are in x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay? But we're not done yet because we can also go 3 away this direction, right? At to negative 3. Okay? If I want to go more than 3 away from this point, again, if I go 3 away this direction, I am now 3 away right here. If I want to be more than 3 away, which way, I should, which way should I go from here? If I want to go more than three away, which way should I go from here? More than three away? Mm-hmm. I'm at negative three, right. So which we're going to go further away from three. Further away from the zero, so which direction? Left or right? Left. The left. So I also am going to include all these numbers over here because they're also further than three away from zero. And again, we'll include the three as well, so big solid dot there. What inequality describes this part of the number line? Greater than or equal to, uh, not greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, negative three. Okay. So either we want to be, we want to have our, our x values have to be less than or equal to negative three, or greater than or equal to positive three, and that's our answer. Here. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so what happened, right? In an equation, when we have that absolute value isolated like this, we split it into two equations. One where it stays the exact same, right? X is equal to three. One where it, we switch it to the opposite, right? Positive three becomes negative three, okay? What happens with the inequality? Well, it also, we have it isolated, right? It also one of them stays exactly the same, right? Well, x greater than equal to 3, x greater than equal to 3. And then what about this other one? Positive 3 becomes negative 3. But what else changed? This is the sign. The sign, right? The inequality symbol changed from greater than equal to to less than or equal to. Okay? This is going to happen in general. All right? Just like our equation, we had to split into two equations, right? One where it's equal to the positive 3, one where it's equal to negative 3. This also, when you isolate the absolute value, will split into two inequalities. One that stays the exact same, right? x greater than or equal to 3. There it is, x greater than or equal to 3. And one where the number is the opposite, and the sign also flips. So the numbers, number changes from 3 to negative 3, and the sign flips from greater than or equal to 2 to less than or equal to 3. That is the main difference, OK? All this other work I showed you just leads to that conclusion. Stays the same. And then the sign flips, and the inequality sign flips too. So positive to negative, and the inequality sign flips direction. Okay, that's it. So let's show you another one here. Again, I'll do another simple one, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll do another simple one here. Uh, okay, I'll change the sign though. So now instead of being more than three away, I want to be less than three away. Okay, less than three away. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll draw another number line. And you don't have to draw this number line when you're doing your work, but if it helps you, you know, feel free to. Um, yeah, it gets a little bit trickier when you're trying to. I, I, yeah, eh, I would say you won't need to worry about drawing the number line, I'll say, for the most part. All right, anyway. Okay, so our distance 
from zero, right, we want to be less than or equal to three. So again, I'll go one, two, three. Here I am exactly, exactly three away from zero, which is okay, I can be equal to three, so I'll put a solid dot here. If I want to be less than three away from zero, which direction should I go for numbers that are less than three away from zero? To the left, okay, so to the left, to the left. Right. I'm not going to go, I'll, I'm going to stop shading here and you'll see why, okay? So the other way I can go three away from zero is this direction on the number line, right? To negative three. Okay. <coughs> and again, if I want to be less than three units away, here at negative three, I'm exactly three units away from zero. If I want to be less than three units away, which direction should I go for numbers that are less than three units away? Well, to the, right. which way? Less than, to the left. To the left? Wait, so is negative four... How, how far is negative four from zero? Four units away. Is that less than three units away? Oh, you're yeah. asking for less than Yeah, right. I want to go less than, so I have, to, I have to go to the right here. Okay, so that's a little bit weird. Let me, let me repeat that, all right? I want to be three units away, or less than that. Right? I want my distance for x to be less than three units away. So again, if I go exactly three units out, I'm here. If I want to be less than that, I'm going to go to the left. Okay? But if I go three units this way, and I want to be less than three units away, I have to go to the right. Okay? If be less than three units away, I have to be like negative two away, or negative one, okay? Because then that's only two away or one away. Okay? So if I want to be less than three units away, I am between two numbers. And so the inequality we can write here is I want to be less than or equal to 3 and then greater than or equal to negative 3. And this is an and. We join these with an and where they both overlap. that we end up with the same exact inequality, well, not the well, sorry. So the same situation happens here, right, where when I have my absolute value isolated, right, I break it into two inequalities. Okay, one that stays the exact same, right, this one stays the exact same, we just drop the absolute value, and the other one, the inequality sign flips, and we go from a positive three to a negative three. The only other difference here is whether you have to use the word and or the word or, okay? When they're going two completely opposite directions like this, Okay, two completely opposite and they don't overlap, that's going to be or for sure. Okay? I didn't mean to rhyme, but there it was. Christian, one sec. And then, um, and then um, this one right here, okay, when they kind of meet up and they're pointing the same direction, that's an and inequality. That from Christian, is that what it is? Yes, so that's the main idea. Okay? Everything we do today is going to fall back to one of these two examples. Either you're going to be greater than or equal to, or you're going to be less than or equal to. Okay. All right. So do two more here, and then I'll have you guys try two on your own. So let's solve the inequality. Okay, and I'll just be like, hint, isolate the absolute value. Okay. All right, so I'm going to. So now we'll start making them a little more complex than with those simple ones we were doing. Okay. So, Luke L, to solve this inequality, what would be a good first step to do? Yeah, exactly right. Divide both sides by three. You got it. Okay, I'm going to write that in here. Okay, so nine divided by three gives us three. Okay, 
This is the point, and again, Bobby, this is what I was pointing to your, I pointed out earlier, right? And, and for everybody, once you isolate the absolute value, okay, you want to check your, your equation or inequality to see if it makes sense. Does it make sense to take the absolute value of something and for it to be something that's greater than or equal to three? Is that possible for us to have an absolute value of something that's greater than or equal to three? Yes. Yes. So this is not impossible. We can proceed, right? We don't have to stop. Okay? Because there could be absolute value, there could be, you know, inequalities that are impossible for us to solve. All right, at this point, we're going to, again, break it into two inequalities. One where the inequality stays exactly the same. Okay, so x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 3. And one where the inequality flips. So instead of greater than, it's less than. And instead of a positive 3, it's a negative 3. Okay. And then we just solve from there. So we'll add 7 to both sides for this one over here, so you get x is greater than or equal to uh, 10. And for this one, I'll add 7 to both sides here. Okay, and we get x is less than or equal to 4. Okay. And this is going to be an or inequality here. Questions on any of that? We'll do one more here together, and then I'll have you guys try some on your own. Okay? One more here together, and we'll try some on our own. All right, let's see here. Two here. Let's go to Shane. Shane will be a good first step here for this inequality to start solving. Okay, yep. Yeah. First, we'll get rid of the five. Okay, so subtract five on both sides. And then, yeah, now Shane, we should do what to both sides? Yep. Yeah. Divide both sides by two. Okay. So we're left with the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than 5. <clears throat> okay. Now, at this point, right, we want to check our inequality. Does this inequality make sense? Is it possible to take the absolute value of something and have it be less than 5? So, um, Let's see here. Um, Lindsay, what do you think? Is this inequality possible here? Yeah, yeah it's possible. So we're going to proceed, right? Um, something that would be impossible. For example, if this were a negative 5, is it possible for the absolute value of something to be less than a negative 5 if I put a negative here instead? No, right? You can't have absolute value be less than a negative, right? It would never be negative, much less, less than a negative, right? So anyway, break it up into two inequalities. Okay, one of those inequalities will stay the exact same. 2x plus 3 is less than 5. And then this inequality right here, again, 2x plus 3, instead of less than, we'll make it greater than. Instead of a 5, we'll make it a negative 5. Then. Okay, so the sign flips, and we change from positive to negative. Then. And let me just solve. So, um, <clears throat> Matthew, how would I solve from here? Let's like, how about this one right here? What would I do to this one to solve it here? Subtract 3, Subtract three divide by 2. And then divide by 2. 2x is less than 2, so divide by 2, Ooh, it'll just fit, x is less than 1. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here, just like Matthew said, subtract 3, so I have 2x is greater than, now negative 5 take away 3 is negative 8, right? and then divide both sides by 2, Ooh, I'm going to run out of space, x is greater than negative 4. Okay, and this will be an and inequality. 
Okay, it's a great question. So, um, if you let me hold off on that part, and I'll talk about it in a little bit. Yeah, let me let me hold off on that. I want to have you guys make sure you can solve it correctly first, and then we'll talk about that. I will get to it. Though, I promise. I will get to it. Let me hold off. On that. Okay. So let me give you guys two, two try, two, two try. Okay. So solve. Okay. All right, so here's one. Absolute value of x plus one minus four is less than or equal to negative two. Okay. Uh, and then absolute value of x plus five is greater than or equal to negative ten. Okay. So try both of those. See what you can come up with there. I isolate the absolute value. Break it into two inequalities, okay, and solve. Can I can maybe leave? Let's see here. I'll leave those two examples up there for you to see as well if you want to refer to those to help. Okay. So these are for you to try down here. I left the examples up there for you to see too if you need to refer to those. Number two is not no solution. Yes, there is a special answer here, in the typical one, but it's not no solution. Correct, correct, less than negative, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, yep, yep. All right. Anyone still working? Looks like we're all done for the most part. Okay, let's take a look here how we did. So let me call on someone here. All right. How about Hannah? What did you do for number one? Um, I don't care if this is right here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go for it anyway and see what happens if you're willing to, you know, do that. So. Okay. You were! Okay. So that was correct. All right. So that's canceling out. We're left with the absolute x plus 1 plus equal to 2. Okay, then. Okay, now I'm out. So let's pause. First of all, we've isolated the absolute value. So at this point, this is the point, whether we're in an equation with an equal sign or whether we're in an inequality like we are now, this is where we decide whether we want to split it up or we, if we need to solve it in the first place. Right? So is it possible for us to take the absolute value of something and have it be less than 2? So absolute value will just make things positive. Are there positive numbers that are less than 2? Yeah. So, so we can still solve this because there's still positive numbers here. If this were negative 2, Hannah, right? So if I was saying absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to negative 2, well, that would be impossible. The only numbers that are less than negative 2 are more negative numbers, which absolute value would never be equal to negative. Right? So this one is possible because we're less than a positive number. So far, so good? Yeah. So we can split it up. So now we split it up. Okay. Did you try splitting it up at all, or you kind of weren't, weren't sure here? Uh, I didn't even try. Okay. So the first, you said you didn't? No. Okay. So the first one here that we're going to split it up to, it just stays the same. So it'll be x plus 1 less than or equal to 2. We just drop the absolute values. Like nothing changes, we just drop the absolute values. Okay. okay. The second one, we flip the inequality sign. So less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. And then we also change this from positive to negative 2. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. That's all we change. It's just like an equation, right? In an equation, we split it in two. We kept one of the numbers the same. We made the other the opposite. In an equation, when you flip an equal sign, it's still an equal sign, so it doesn't really change. But in inequality, right, the direction does change. So, or there's, you know, the direction matters, right? So that's, you know, you see it here because the direction matters. In the equation, you flip, you're technically flipping the equal sign. We never really did that, but we are, um, and it's the same thing. So anyway, that's all you have to do. And so now at this point, I think you should be fine, right? What should I do here to continue solving? What's with the x that we need to get rid of? Yeah, so how do you get plus 1? Yeah, that's that's all there is. It's just, re, it's just continuing our solving. That's all it is, okay? So x less than or equal to 1. And then same thing here, right? We have plus 1, so x is greater than or equal to negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Okay. This will be a and inequality. And again, I'll, I promise that we'll, we'll, we'll get to that answer your question. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Hannah. All right, number two. Let's go to Jacob K. Jacob K. Uh, what you come up with here, Jacob, for number two? Um, I'll be sure. Okay. Well, let's take a look. The absolute value here is already isolated, right? It's already by itself. Yeah. All right, so you want to see, is it even possible for this to do this? Okay, so we're going to take the absolute value of something, which we'll just make it positive, whatever the answer is, positive or zero. Right? And we want to know, when is this going to be more than or equal to a negative 10? So we want to know. We're going to, we're going to take the absolute value of something, and we want to know, when will that be greater than or equal to negative 10? But will that be true? Absolute values makes things positive, always, right? Or makes it zero. When will a positive number or zero be more than or equal to negative 10? That's okay. with the whole class here. I'll open up the class. When will a positive number be greater than or equal to a negative 10? Yeah. Not never. 
When will it be? It's always true, right? A positive number, right? This is the absolute value of It's positive. A positive number will be always greater than or equal to negative 10. So this is all solutions, or all possible numbers, you know, all real numbers, I should say. Okay, or if you want to say infinite solutions. Any number. Any number you put in for x will make this inequality true because no matter what, no matter what you put in for x, you're going to add 5 and then take the absolute value. It's going to be positive or 0, bless you, and that's always more than or equal to negative 10. So this is always true. So Jake, this was a weird one, right? This is a weird one. But that's the answer here. It's always true. Okay. You can say all real numbers, or you can say infinite solutions there, whichever one you want. It's always true. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Likewise, if I change this to be absolute value of x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 10, when will the absolute value of something be less than a negative number? No. Never. So no solution would be the answer here. Okay. No solution be the answer. All right. Questions on any of that? All right. So, um, to talk back to what I promised um, Luke, I would mention here. Okay. How do we know when it's a greater than or a uh, when? How do you know when it's an and? type inequality or an or type inequality? Well, it has to do with the kind of graph that we're going to get from our solutions. So, for example, if you look here, right, the or inequality, we're pointing two different directions. So we go out one way and then further, or we go out the other way and then further in the opposite direction. Okay, you'll notice that happens with a greater than your equal to symbol. For greater than or equal to, we're trying to go out a certain dis distance and then further away, right? So greater than or equal to, we go out a distance further away. So that's or. Okay. For less than, we go out a certain distance and we stay between those two numbers. Okay, Luke. So that would be and. Okay. So. Uh huh. And if you want like a little like word slash memory device to help you remember that, okay. So you can think of it as great or than. Great or than, so obviously greater is spelled G R E A T E R. But if you think great or than, right, that'll help remember that it's an or. And for the less than, if you think less than, okay, so less than and great or than or, okay, so that's how you can remember it. <coughs> If your inequality, when you solve that absolute value, inequality is a greater than symbol, it's going to be an or. If it's a less than symbol there, it's going to be an and. Yeah. Number one. Number one. Oh, I just did. Gotcha. So it was an and. Less than or equal to and. Okay. <laughs> All right. Other questions or anything? All right, so I'm going to get you guys started on your assignment here. So let me do that for you. <coughs> Let's see, do I have it here? No, that's the notes here. Okay. Um, Okie dokie. Um, yes, it'll be in the book. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, so on um, in section 2.3, which you'll have to write the page over here because this is the wrong. section. 
Section 2.3. Uh -huh. Section 2.3, starting on page 67. <coughs> I would like you to do numbers. Is this like the it will be the homework if you don't finish in class. Yep. Mm -hmm. 7 through 10. Actually, yeah, okay. 7 through 10. Eleven through thirteen and fifteen. I think that's it. Yeah. So um seven through ten, it's like a matching. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and eleven thirteen, that is solving. Actually eleven through fifteen eleven through thirteen and fifteen is solving. Okay. It also wants you to solve these as well. So 7 through 10, you're supposed to match the graph and solve them, okay? So let me know if you have any trouble on any of those. Okay. So you have a good 20 minutes to get started. So that means that tomorrow when I go around to check homework, everyone should have 20 minutes of homework done. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Hi. I do. Will do. Mm-hmm. Nick, Miss Baker wants to see you. <laughs>